Hello, Cross Riverian. The best school has come to stay in the city of Calabar. It is called Beryl International School. Take advantage of this opportunity. Now, now. Tell me the best school. Beryl is the best. Tell me the best school. Hi, nice friends. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing Well, it's my earnest prayer and desire that this pandemic will leave us so that we will begin our normal activities uh, again. Well, I remain Miss Judy Praise, and I will be taking you, the grade three ninth friends, on English language during this period, as you all know. Well, Last week, in our last class, we looked at a very nice topic, and our topic was question tag. I hope we all still remember what we did last week. Yes, you still remember the meaning of the question tag? But if I ask you now, nice friends, what is a question tag? You can tell me, isn't it? Okay, and then we also looked at the negative statements with a positive question tag and also positive statements with a negative question tag. Now, away from that, today I am bringing to you a very nice topic. In fact, today's topic is very, very interesting, more interesting than the one of last week. And our topic for today is poem. Poem. That is our topic for today. Yes, I can see that a lot of you are smiling. Yes, you love this topic, isn't it? In fact, everybody is going to have a wonderful time in today's class. Now, let's go ahead to look at what poem means. What poem means. Okay, nice friends. Yes, you want to look at the meaning of Poem. What is a poem? A poem is a collection of spoken or written words that expresses ideas or emotions in a powerfully vivid and imaginative style. And then, nice friend is wondering, Miss Julie, what do you mean by vivid? I'm going to explain. Vivid means having a clear picture of something, okay? Vivid. Having a clear picture of something, okay? Imaginative style means you can just sit down and begin to imagine what the writer is talking about. So you could say a poem is a collection of written or spoken words that expresses ideas, which means that a writer of a poem, okay, tries to do what? Express how he or she feels when writing a particular poem, okay? Tries to express ideas, express emotions, okay? Now, when you are either listening to a poem or reading the poem, all right? Now, what you as the reader or the listener is doing, you're, you're trying to picture what the writer was going through at that particular time when he or she was writing this poem down. Now, you can also, while looking at the poem, you begin to picture yourself, picture, picture things, okay? You begin to, even though it does, maybe a poem, most times, when the writer is putting it down, you know, they do it with their whole being, okay? Most of them, after they finish writing, they'll come back and look at that poem and they'll be asking themselves, you mean I actually wrote something like this? You know, they are trying to convey the way they feel, trying to express ideas, things that are going on in their mind, which they may, probably they can't say to anybody, but they put it down in form of a poem. Now, we're going to be going ahead to look at the functions of a poem, okay? But I'm going to give us just two functions. We have the functions of a poem, okay? And I'm going to 
should give us just two functions. Number one, to convey an idea or emotion in a beautiful language. That's what a poem does, okay, to either the listener or to the reader. Number two, to paint a picture of what the poet feels about a thing, person, idea, concept, or even an object. We have already explained all these when we are looking at the definition of a poem. Now we are going to go ahead to look at something very interesting. A person who writes a poem is called a a poet. A person who writes a poem is called a poet. So we will not be using the, the, the word writer anymore. We're going to be using the poet, okay? The poet. So when I say poet, you know that I'm referring to the person who writes a particular poem, okay? Now, next, we're going to be looking at a very nice poem. A very nice poem. I hope you're all ready to sing it with me. So let's go. Our poem for today is my mother yes my nice friends are already smiling my mother by a very nice friends by an sailor as a little girl this, in fact, even right now as I'm all grown up, my mother is a very nice poem that I don't take for granted. I sing it every time. In fact, anywhere I hear it, I will also join whoever is reciting or singing the poem, okay? Because I love the poem titled My Mother. Okay. This is a poem titled My Mother by Anne Taylor. Now, a poem is written in stanzas, okay, to make it sweeter and interesting. And it's written by Anne Taylor, My Mother by Anne Taylor, who sat and washed my infant head when sleeping on my cradle bed and tears of sweet affection shed my mother the next stanza when pain and sickness made me cry who gazed upon my heavy eye and wept for fear that i should die my mother who taught my infant lips to pray and love God's holy book and day and walk in wisdom's pleasant way? My mother. And can I ever cease to be affectionate and kind to thee? Who was so very kind to me? My mother. And I'm going to sing it in a very interesting manner. And where? Please, when I sing, you sing after me. Let's go. Who sat and washed my infant head when sleeping on? My cradle bed and tears of sweet affection share my mother. When pain and sickness made me cry, 
if I should ask my nice friends now, between mommy and daddy, who do you love the most? My nice friends will say, I love my mommy. But you see, we should love mommy and daddy the same because they love us so much. They brought us into this world and they care and they provide for us. Yeah, I know some of my daddies may be saying, Miss Julie Praise, this is not fair. Why are you only talking about mothers today? Don't worry, daddies, another day will be for you, okay? Now, from the poem, we can see that the poet is trying to tell us the things that her mother did for her, okay? First, she said that her mother sat and did what? Watch her as a baby, even when she was sleeping, okay? Her mommy used to do what? Watch her, okay? Even most of us, in fact, everybody, our mothers take the pains, they bring us to birth, you don't see it? They go to the hospital, you don't see it? They go into labor and then we are born. Our mothers carry us on their backs, you don't see it? They take care of us while daddy goes out to work and bring in money. Mommy does what? Stays at home to do what? Care for. Oh, there's, a, there's a song we used to sing when I was a child. I love my mommy. I love my daddy. I love them so much. Mommy cares for me. Daddy provides for me. I love them so dearly. So you see, mommy and daddy, they both come together to, to do what? To make sure that we live a happy life so you have to love mommy and daddy equally okay now the writer the poet is saying that even when she was sick her mom her mother would do what be there to watch over her the mother taught her how to pray taught her how to love the book of god which is the bible and also how to go to church and love going to church not, not just going to church for going sake but love going to church and to walk in the way of the lord and the last stanza we have on the board here say the writer the poet say how can she cease to be so kind and affectionate to her mother okay why because the mother has been through a lot for her as a child and while she was growing up. So she said, can, how, can, how can she ever cease to be affectionate and kind to her mother who was very kind to her? So you see, nice friends, you should love our parents. I pity those nice friends who will always want to fight their parents. Fight mommy, fight daddy. No, because one day you will also grow and you will also become a mommy and a daddy. So you see, cherish our parents, especially our mothers. Okay, nice friends, let's go over what we have done for today. We looked at poem as our topic for today. And we said a poem is a collection of spoken or written words that expresses ideas or emotions in a powerfully vivid and imaginative style. We went ahead to look at two functions of a poem. Then I went ahead to tell us that a person who writes a poem is called a poet. And poems are written in stanzas. They are written in stanzas. Now, we have this beautiful poem on the board. But my poem has been written in four stanzas. The poem, my mother, has six standards. So for your home activity, you're going to do me and do yourself enough good to complete the remaining two standards of the poem, my mother. If you go to your collected poem book, which you have with you, you will see it there. So what you do is, you go back and sing this poem for your mother. Okay, and when you finish, 
just give your mommy a big super hug and tell your mommy that you love her. So our homework will be homework. Write the two remaining stanzas of the poem my mother all right that will be all nice friends so I come your way again in our next class please take good care of yourself I love you so much. Bye-bye.